So, a while back I made this uh, chest of drawers of some sort, I guess. It's just racks of my stuff, it's so that the stuff doesn't end up laying out everywhere. Um, even though it does end up laying out everywhere, it's not as bad as it would be otherwise. But uh, this had me thinking, that happened a long time ago. I have three whole racks of old stuff. Just things that I don't need anymore. So I figured I'd uh, go through some of it just so that you guys can see some of what I was up to. One of the biggest projects that I had worked on, I guess what really got me started with a lot of this, the whole glass circuit boards, circuit boards on, uh, on silicone, conductive, material, all of that, was a keytar I was working on. Actually, uh, let me go get that keytar. I was uh, gonna try to make this clear uh, I guess acrylic guitar, it uh, never worked out. It's been a lot of time, a lot of effort, and just kind of uh, gave up. But there's a lot of circuits and everything else that was uh, a big learning experience out of that. So some of the first ones were when I figured out how to make touch sensitive circuit boards on glass. So I ended up getting uh, my friend Kelsey to go design this design and uh, I have other friends that have designed other designs um, and as you can see it's got ridiculously uh, I think it's a good way of showing this off a very elaborate design right here and uh, it was a lot of fun to make and I fabricated a couple of these and they worked they worked just fine so just by pressing on the back here you could play the notes like a keyboard and uh, it worked out uh, just wasn't something I could easily integrate into the keytar, so I gave up and put it away. Same thing for the top of the keytar here. Uh, this right here was to go on the point of the keytar, and uh, my friend Sterling Diesel made this one. And, uh, well, I guess did the design, I, I did the, the printing. And, uh, I don't know if I can find it, there's another part of it somewhere here along with a, a brain I was working on and there's a whole bunch of other failed projects just things that I got a chance to go print and never really cared much more about in fact I don't even know what this is it's got a little AT tiny on it some MOSFETs and MOSFET controllers eh, who knows what that was for I have here my AVR on a microscope slide that could run Minecraft, another copy of it. I still have my mounted copy upstairs. I have this, you know, honestly, I don't even know what half the stuff is anymore. I can't even remember printing it. Uh, oh, hey, this is neat. This is the predecessor to the AVR on a Minecraft slide. Uh, it was one of the first ones I made. As you can see, I had to do a whole lot of jumpers to get it to work, but it worked, and that's neat. Um, I have a little power over Ethernet boards, a bunch of extra leftover circuit boards. Um, old Neon FM boards. Believe it or not, uh, the first batch of most of the Neon FM boards I printed right in my very home basement. Eventually I moved on up to uh, Oshpark and IT Studios. Actually, to be fair, I never did any with Oshpark. I did them all with IT Studios and Electro Dragon. This is one of the early revisions of the RGB boards that go in the panels for Neon FM. They, uh, they got 24 LEDs on them, just like the new ones, and uh, AT Mega. This one's an AT Mega 48, and uh, it uses the old style connector. Uh, we use much better connectors now. Here's uh, one of the first tests I had for uh, RGB controllers that sit on aluminum heat sinks. So the idea is that you print the circuit boards on the silicone thermally conductive stuff, and they're driven by an AT Tiny 44 and several bipolar, or BJTs, not bipolar, <laughs> um, BJT uh, transistors in order to, to drive them to brightness and by doing that you don't have PWM, you don't have this you know on and off pattern, it's just a brightness control. Let's see what else. Ooh, the little AVR glass clock, you guys probably remember that. Still might work, probably won't, I don't know, don't really care anymore. Here's uh, another test I tried of using Kapton with the LED on it for thermally, thermal conduction. Um, that didn't really work at all. The uh, silicone stuff was much, much better. 
Uh, this worked. It was a little uh, 8x8 uh, LED controller for these 8x8 grids. Um, I got a video on that one. Do you want to see? It's right there. Uh, let's see here. Stencils for old Neon FM parts. Stencils are pretty neat. I usually only use them though if I'm making several of something. Otherwise, I'll just use my regular old smear the potter solder paste on all the pads and it'll work fine. This right here was supposed to be a button panel for a DDR machine. I just designed it quickly and threw it together. It's a two layer board, capacitive touch sensing. Totally worked. Um, just never really did anything with it. Here is the first version of the switch mode power supply I used in my uh, flashlight video. Um, this one worked. Uh, don't really remember why I stopped using it. As you can see, I have a couple more demonstration units I was working on with the uh, silicone uh, circuit boards. These all actually still work as far as I'm aware. I just used one a few days ago, or I guess a few months ago now. Um, but those were neat. Let's see here. I have no idea. Oh, it's a NTSC video board. I guess I just was trying that out. Dated all the way back to 2011. Good grief, this hobby's been going on too long. Random AVRs with USB on them. Uh, hey, there's more boards for the, uh, the Matrix LEDs. Ah, look at that. That's actually an 8751 programmed with a DMX program on it. So you can plug up to your parallel port and output lighting. I did that when I was in 10th grade, I think. Let's see here, what else? Oh my. This was one of my first uh, attempts at RS-45 communication. And this was a touch panel, it was uh, four buttons, you get click, 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 click. And it would communicate over RS-45 what was being clicked, that worked didn't care anymore. Here was uh, the first version of the PS2 synth. You can see it a little has the PS2 plug. I don't know what possessed me to put it on a microscope slide. Um, it worked. It's cracked. Eh, I mean, whatever. Um, I don't know what that is. Not really sure what that is either, but my gosh, it's fine pitched. That's right, before a long time I didn't realize that uh, having wider traces was a good thing. So as you can see, these traces are itty bitty. Still, somehow the board worked as far as I remember. Let's see here. I have more test boards. This was, uh, oh yeah, this was uh, one of the boards for the Kitar, except it was done with uh, silicone as the base plate. That doesn't work. So you can see right here. A lot of the traces just kind of started falling off. That was pretty terrible. I, uh, yeah, that's never gonna work. Ah, this one's a neat one. So, a while back I did a video on touch sensitive AVRs. This was the very first one I did. At least, touch sensitive AVR, that is. Um, worked pretty well. Had fun. Little AT Tiny 44, some touch sensitive code. Here's a more modern cut at the Kitar board. A lot of those glass circuit boards. And then I also learned that you could use ribbon cables. That really helped because now the profile is pretty thin versus before it was pretty thick. Um, additionally, some of those things popped off because they just broke. Here's a, another one of them. Yeah, I printed a, a lot of fairly large glass circuit boards and uh, so a lot of work and many of them didn't work and I learned a lot. Here's the uh, guts from the Nintendo Zapper project I did. Um, I don't know why I have two of these now. I do. Let's see here, what else? A little AT Mega 328, or 32U2 rather. It's a little board, just generic breakout. I have here the it's a touchpad my friend Adam designed. Um, I'm not sure why I didn't actually make more of these. It's a touch sensitive touchpad um, by my friend Adam Geary. Yeah, see the little Geary logo down there. Um, yeah, it, it shows up as a hit device, has a bunch of LEDs. You click the buttons and it's like a gaming keyboard. Um, it's actually, yeah, I probably should do something with that. Oh well, not enough time. Some more random circuit boards. 
ooh, one of the first, uh, actually I think this is the first uh, touch sensitive glass PCB that was completely successful. And up here we have more stuff. Oh no! So, uh, my light has worked against me. Okay, so here I've got a bunch of other random stuff. Here is a thermocouple thing with the USB enabled AVR on it. Um, as far as I remember, I was actually able to get the thermocouple temperature off, and then I got bored and didn't use that project anymore. Um, this was my first general purpose AVR uh, with magnetometer board. Uh, we used these in Cardiac, uh, another game that was created by uh, Unity. Uh, the game, same thing we use for Neon FM. Um, we actually don't use that particular board anymore, but uh, it was still fun. The the new boards still kind of have their, their spiritual successor, I guess. This was uh, just a random board I made with a, a bunch of I.O. on it, just generic. has a uh, AT uh, Mega 168 on it, a little... Uh, ENC 424J600. Uh, I never used it for anything. Also, I don't really like these kinds of contacts anymore. We have to shove the screwdriver in to get the wires out. Um, general purpose board that has a bunch of connectors on it. And uh, AT Mega 168, so it would use VUSB. This one I know worked, I just never did anything with it. Uh, my roommate did this one. It was an attempt at making a uh, power over Ethernet power supply. I think he never got that working, but I'm not sure. Uh, I guess that was Rev2, or this might have been a dumb injector. I think that did work. Um, I think that was an early Neon FM board. I'm not sure. I made a uh, optical DDR pad once, and this was one of the circuit boards that was used in it, or part of a circuit board that I used in it. It's not being used anymore. Hey, the armature part for the keytar. This uh, this has a whole bunch of individual sections that you can't really easily see, but they're all interwoven. And as you move your finger up and down the the neck of the keytar, it will tell where your fingers are, so you can do audio effects with it. Okay, I never actually did any of that, but uh, I'm sure it could be done if I ever, you know, bother working with that keytar again. More glass circuit boards from the keytar, more Neon FM boards. Uh, ooh. This is neat. I made badges for MAGFest one year. It's uh, a lot of fun. I had uh, two touch sensitive pads, an AT Tiny 85, and some other stuff. Made some badges out of it, did a couple videos on just some things you could do with them. That was neat. More uh, AVR things that were compatible with Minecraft. Um, yeah, I think that's just about it for all of my trash circuit boards. Here is some uh, synthesizer I made. Little AVR on it, two audio outs, USBs for power. PS2 cable for input, PS2 keyboard that is. Um, worked, it's potted in silicone. If you're curious how I pop my things in silicone, you can click on that video. This is a uh, synthesizer I made. This is actually the one that Dominic Circuiti was playing. It's got MIDI in, not used in that video. It's got DMX out, not used in that video. It's got this little synthesizer thing going on in the bottom. So I'm just an AT making some other junk up top. Uh, Got this thing right here. This is actually a uh, uh, Ethernet enabled AVR. It's the same one for my Minecraft videos. Actually, it is running a Minecraft server. Controls the lights in my living room. And a uh, little, uh, I guess I just kind of abused the uh, Neon FM RGB boards for their MOSFETs and uh, decided to hook that up to the white channel in my living room. Here is a failed project of mine. I tried making an AT Tiny 85 into a switch mode power supply. Uh, it was a lot of work and uh, never really got it working well, so I just gave up. So there was a few other things I had here uh, I forgot about. One is this. I took the uh, this big copper thing and soldered it to itself after cutting it in order to make this T channel. 
uh, that actually slides into the keytar. I have a video of it right here of it just lighting up. Took a whole bunch of pretty powerful LEDs, strapped them to the copper with the silicone heat sinks, and uh, strung them together. It totally worked. Uh, don't think I would do it this way anymore. I think I'd use WS2812s and just put a boatload of them in there. This other little project right here. Uh, I have these neat little uh, this is these OLED displays, and uh, they're available from China, super cheap. Uh, decided to see if I could just get it to straight up work with an AVR. Um, just first of all, wanted to see if I could get it to work straight soldering to the board, and the answer was yes. It's easy as pie. They talk to them very easily. This uh, cute little uh, couple of these I made now, these AT Tiny 85 breakout boards. You can use these things for just about anything. Driving WS2812s, lighting up things randomly, giving you timers, giving you a clock. You know, actually, you can even do uh, full, or I guess it's half duplex, bi directional Ethernet communications with them. Just, you know, an extra two resistors or something else. I made a whole bunch of these. This is just another revision of it. I love these uh, tiny USB programmers, the tiny ISPs. Um, I have a bunch of different form factors. This was one that I never really liked that much, but uh, did it anyway, where I uh, soldered on a female header, so you just plug this into a board, like that there, Oop. and uh, you can program it. Actually, that's wrong. And you can just program the board. One of the problems with uh, glass circuit boards is the possibility of complete just failure. Uh, here, these have the ribbon cable headers on them, and it fell forward. It just went whoosh. And when it fell, it smashed a hole through the back of the board. Let's see here if I can uh, get that in focus. But it's, uh, yeah, pretty catastrophic there. Uh, I also have these paper pads that I was playing with. Um, I watched a video on YouTube about some kid playing on just a piece of paper with a launch pad, so a fake launch pad, and I said, well, I wonder if I could just do that for super duper cheap and turn it into something paper-like. I uh, didn't really care and gave up on that project. Um, here is another glass circuit board that was a complete failure. Here is my pocket watch thing that I did a few videos on. Um, I actually uh, damaged the battery somehow, and then I lost the front of the the glass part of the the pocket watch container and I never found another pocket watch container that would fit it so I just gave up on that project. Here is the uh, AVR I used for my uh, network and video at the same time on an AVR. Um, as far as I know this one still works except the uh, wire fell off for the video. Here was uh, another successor for the uh, optical DDR pads. It's got all the good stuff on it, but I never actually wrote any firmware for it. Like a lot of my projects, I never, you know, I'll build the board and I'll just never write the firmware. I guess it's kind of lame. Uh, oh, here I have a battery charger that I also never wrote the firmware for. It's got all this good stuff to charge lithium batteries and has USB. I was hoping to make a bunch of curves, but I never really got around to writing the firmware. Or this here, which is an AT Tiny 85 that was supposed to be a uh, um, <clears throat> supposed to be a general purpose like anything clock, so I could make frequencies on up to around 60 megahertz by XORing the two uh, inverting outputs and using the dead time generator. Uh, while I was able to generate you know 60 megahertz with that AT Tiny 85 very easily, um, I couldn't really uh, never really wrote any firmware to make it so it was easily controlled. Well. I don't know. Uh, hope you guys like this. I had kind of fun going back through a lot of my projects.